One Circuit Mailbag, coming to you live from downtown Tasmania. One Circuit, we smash electrons and positrons together just for fun. Okie dokie. Here we go. Um, what's the orange pie doing there? That is a good question. Uh, because uh, I've been doing a lot of work with it lately and I just want to put it inside the acrylic case that it came with. So that's after mailbag. We will do that. Um, yeah, orange pie 3B. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, here we go. So it looks like I have been stocking up on some little potentiometers here. Um, hmm. But what size? Uh, I'm not really sure what A1317, A05 means off the top of my head. So let's grab one out. Are they all the same? They look like they're all the same. Yep. Uh, probably for the candle project because ultimately the candle power comes through from the uh, battery through to the LEDs. And you can throttle that. Um, so you can have a bright candle or a pretty anemic one, depending. I want to say, well, I think I, I think I want to say 2K. I like 2K because it gives you a little bit of freedom as to what you do. Uh, so if I pull this pin up and slot this guy in here, I reckon we might be able to get something. And all I just need is a little screwdriver flat. Yep. Okay, good to go. So they're usually set in the middle, so I'll be able to tell pretty much straight away uh, what's going on. So it's t it shouldn't take that long to... Oh, it does. Okay, yeah, so in the middle. So I think I was right with 2K, so that's 1K. And if I wind it one way, we should see a change. Come on, man. There we go. Waiting, waiting... Uh, yep, so there you go. So it's going up towards 2K and we'll go the other way for a bright light. I mean, that uh, that LED combo has a fixed resistor in there anyway, 241. I think I'll put a 100 ohm resistor in there anyway as a minimum. And then so you could wind this one right back and things would still be good. So yeah, that's great. Nice. So that's just a restock. <laughs> Which bag did it come out of? Let's say this one. Uh, I'll be able to tell on the video later on. Uh, yeah, restocking of uh, little pots. Beautiful thing. Right. Ooh, might need to replace that blade at some stage. And we have lots of LEDs for, surprise, surprise, uh, the candle project. Uh, they're 1206s. So, a oh, warm white. Oh, orange. And yellow. Ooh. Uh, so a yellow with three L's. It's got to be extra yellow, I guess. Um, what we want to do is probably get these side by side and see what it looks like. So probably like orange uh, and then maybe yellows either side or white and a couple of oranges either side just for some variation with the candle project. So um, let's, let's maybe put these together and see what they look like side by side. That'd be pretty cool. Warm white, which is yellow. Uh, okay, uh, that should be yellow and that should be orange. And there's the 2K pot pressed into service straight away. So let's try that. I think I've got around five volts ish coming through 4.57 volts. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, I don't know what the camera's picking up, but I can't see anything coming out of the warm white guy. So, hmm. All right, let's re-solder. I mean, sometimes when you are soldering, and I am an enthusiastic solder, sometimes you can break these things uh, with a little bit too much heat. So maybe that's it. I'll pop another one in and see what we can find. Two out of three ain't bad, I guess. Right, so not the LEDs problem, uh, my problem. Because all these got different forward voltages, of course. So yeah, put the second one on, thought, oh, it's not lighting up either. But if you isolate it, so let's say we do this. Uh, then we get a very different result. Uh, so, of course, path of least resistance, and uh, that's why it's going... That, I mean, you know, that's going to be interesting if I ever do decide to do combinations of different colours. Obviously, these two are reasonably close, although the orange is probably coming out a bit brighter. 
but uh, I'd have to look at different resistors for different LEDs, which would make it very interesting to try and match them up, particularly as the final resistance uh, you know, will, will vary and will probably change that, uh, that whole scenario anyway. But all of the LEDs work, which is probably the main thing. That was an interesting diversion. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, little gift. All right, right down the middle. And yes, I have shuffled them up to the other end before I did this, so just bear with me. All righty. Um, hmm, what is this? Five pieces, max 1044 EPA, max 1044 DIP, max 1044 CPA, etc., etc. Max 1044, I want to say. Eight pin. That does something. Uh, let's put it on a breadboard, find out what it does, and see if this thing actually works. Near as I can tell, this does a lot. Um, so it's a voltage converter of sorts. Um, I think you can, I want to say boost, but I'm not really sure. Um, I did find a couple of circuits which could be useful. This one here to produce a negative. Did I forget where the output comes from? I'll have to check this circuit again. I might set it up and figure out. I've got my 12 volts obviously coming out straight here, but I think it's supposed to produce negative 12 volts, maybe from this one. Uh, and there's another circuit here, which is a voltage doubler, which I'm keen to try as well. So you put a voltage in this side and you get two times that uh, minus the losses from the diodes here. So I've written here shot key, um, but that's pretty weird. I wrote this one down and didn't say where the output is, but I'm pretty sure it's probably that. Let's get this one sorted first. So a 12 volt uh, coming in and then a positive 12 volt and a negative 12 volt coming out. Oh, I think it's from here. I think it must be from here, the negative 12 volt. Um, but let's check that and get this wired up and we'll test it. All right, so I have gone with the nine volts coming in. So, yep, nine volts coming in. And if this circuit is working, this side of this cap should be minus nine, which it is. Okay, should we wind it up to 12? I mean, the only thing I'm worried about is that these caps, which are 10 microfarad, are rated to 25 volts. Is the gap between them going to blow them? That'd be exciting. All right, let's wind it up to uh, 12. Can I do that? So that is now, yep, 11, 12 volts. All righty. So we go this side, coming in, 11.98. And coming out of the, this little wonder chip, minus 11.98. Now, I'm not sure what the current ratings are for this, um, you know, as to whether you could use it in an amp situation. But that is pretty cool. So that is the negative voltage generator. Um, I wonder what the voltage doubler is like. Let's see if we can ramp this up to 24 volts and see if it works. Here's the little doubler circuit, hopefully. So let's see what's coming in. I think I've still got it to 12 volts, and that's according to the power supply anyway. So coming in is, yep, 11.9-ish. And then if this is working, coming out of the second shot key is, look at that, 23.7. Cool. I mean, there's a little bit of loss through those two shot keys, but um, that is such a cool little chip uh, to make a negative voltage and then uh, rigged up like this to uh, be a voltage doubler. I believe also that you can cascade them together, just keep doubling and doubling and doubling. That is pretty cool as well. So uh, yeah, nice chip and um, yeah, a couple of good results for that one. Just be careful with this one. I feel wires in there, so I'm a little nervous about this. Let's see what this is. <laughs> yeah, I have to cut something. Ah, okay. No damage done. All right. So this is just a little adapter. It says three in one USB C to HDMI compatible adapter hub, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this was just about an extra monitor that we bought. And um, the machine that was going into the monitor was a 
Microsoft Surface Pro. So um, not very flexible machines. Uh, the old machines had lots of different outputs on them. Uh, the modern ones don't. So it's just got this uh, USB-C coming out of the device and we need it to go to HDMI. And there's your USB-A and there's, for some unknown reason, you also have a USB-C to USB-C output. Um, yep, so electronics, I don't know, but uh, a very useful adapter to have when you've got a modern machine that doesn't want to talk to, well, uh, a modern machine, um, but uh, not a very flexible uh, thing is the uh, the modern computer. And so the proliferation of these sorts of little adapters is uh, incredible, really, but that's where we are. Dookie dookie. And in this one is... Oh, all right. It says SX1278 low RA module, 433, I presume that might be megahertz, 10 kilometer RA2 AI thinker, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so the genesis of this is actually a project that I was asked to make a contribution to. It was a student who was working on a farm uh, and needed to open the gate from a distance and I believe from the farmhouse to the um, gate is about a kilometer and so this should handle it pretty easily so basically all you would do with the low RAS stuff is that you would maybe hook this up to something perhaps even like an orange pie or an Arduino or something um, so that you can get a message you could even get a message like someone is at the gate and then you press a button or a panel or what have you and at the other end a kilometer away this thing would activate a relay and the gate would open for x amount of time or there could be another sensor beautiful little project really so it's just about wireless transmission and LoRa, you know it's got um capacity uh, to have a, a large distance between the two devices, but there's not an awful lot of data that gets transferred, and that's fine for this, for this exact project. Uh, is there someone at the gate? Um, yes, there is. So open the gate. Is the gate closed? Yes, it is, and all that sort of stuff. So that is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, just to help that student out and to kick off the whole project, uh, there are some lower R modules. Um, we might do another video at some stage about uh, seeing if we can get these to work. Um, I know that I've done something similar way back with distance. I just can't remember what that was. I'll link it if I can find it. Um, but uh, these ones should be, I mean, it says 10Ks. That's got to be under ideal conditions. But I'm assuming uh, 1 or 2K should be pretty easy. Uh, very interesting. If you want to uh, have a look at uh, some LoRa work, particularly extending the range out, then Andreas Space, I think he calls himself the guy with a Swiss accent. I'll try and link that up there as well. Has got some very good... Uh, videos about using these little modules. You can also hook a lot of these up through a hub. Uh, and I actually uh, approached the fire department down here in Tasmania about that to say, look, we could put some modules out, you know, drop them every couple of kilometers and monitor the fire front as it comes through. But they weren't particularly interested. Um, but I have seen that sort of technology used before, I think for flood um, warnings in the UK um, and so yeah having these things communicate to a central hub saying oh I can see a compromise or I can read this or whatever I think that's got potential but um, but yeah that's what this is about maybe a long-term um, project for some gate action one more one more and then we'll have to uh, take this orange pie 3b and uh, and put it in its box but what is this last one it is well wow. Interesting looking beast. It is some sort of board and some probes coming out of it. All right, I have no idea. Let's uh, open up and have a wee look at it. So it says TDS meter with looks like some sort of input and output. And then we have a probe. I don't have any idea what this is or what I had in mind when I was looking at it. That's extraordinary. Uh, let me have a quick look. And uh, yeah, and then we'll also have a closer look at this and see what this is for. 
measuring something. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, I'll um, I'll go and have a look, and we'll come back. TDS total dissolved solids. Uh, again, for uh, a school project, this was a fish tank, and um, yeah. Oh, maybe we don't need. Uh, what does that say? I'll try and get in a bit closer. It says speak. Uh, so a dedicated chip of some sort. I don't recognise that one. V three two four B. It looks like, and the other one is what am I reading here? C D four O six O. I have a feeling I should know what that is, but uh, presumably it uh, has something to do with the channels, maybe for the um, for the actual meter itself. But yeah, so you put the uh, probe in uh, at one end and power obviously at the other. And um, I'm guessing somehow, how would you actually read it? So I don't see any indication. So maybe it's Maybe it's probe in and oh, so plus minus and then analog output that would make sense. And then this would where the is where the probe would go in, presumably. Let's see if we can do that. Yes, I can see that that would that would go straight in there, no problem at all. Uh, and then at the end of the probe goes into the fish tank, and there we go, that's a satisfying click. Uh, end of it goes into the fish tank, and then you read your total dissolved solids from the other end. Handy uh, little meter if you do have some fish tank action going on, um, and oh, just to, just to play with in terms of water quality as well. Um, so I'm going to call that the circuit working for this week. I think that's the end of the mailbag, and uh, I'll now spend a little bit of time putting that orange Pi uh, 3B in its case. So if you see it in the future, hopefully it will be uh, it'll be nicely ensconced in its little house. Uh, see you next time.